Thank you, uh, Bishop. Members of the Religious Council, thank you. It is a humbling honor to have you in our office. We we'll welcome you most respectfully. We submit to this discussion and we pray for God's intervention so we can have a fruitful discussion with full understanding as to where we're going as a country and people. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Honorable. Uh, I would like to have my party introduce themselves, but before we do that, do you mind if we say a word of prayer? Sure, sure. Sheikh, can you lead us in a word of prayer, please? Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik yawmideen, Iyaka na'abdu wa Iyaka nasta'in, Ihidna sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al-magdubi alayhim wa ladu'ali. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh Bamba, um, I think we can introduce ourselves. Let's begin with you, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Dr. Ulu Q. Benjay. I'm the president of the Library of Baptist Missionary Educational Convention and also second vice president of the Librarian Council of Churches, and also on the executive of the uh, Interreligious Council. Uh, I'm Imam Abdullah Mansari from Dorotan. I'm the Imam there was an Imam, and presently chairman of National Muslim Council of Nigeria, also executive member of vice president of uh, uh, the Interreligious Council of Nigeria. I am uh, Anthony Sheikh Musa Mohammed Bamba, Secretary General of the Interreligious Council of Liberia and Executive Member of the National Muslim Council of Liberia. I'm D. Jensen Senkulo. I am the Bishop of the Lutheran Church of Liberia, also a first Vice President of the Liberia Council of Churches and an executive member of the Interreligious Council of Liberia. It's good to be in your office. Thank you, sir. So I'm Darius Dillon. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation to meet with us and for hosting us in your place. Um, we come to meet you and get to know you a little bit. We have heard of you. We have heard you, and uh, we have seen you at a distance. And as a member of the Interreligious Council, although you are not an executive member, but because of your affiliation with one of the religions uh, within that organization, we consider you a member of ours. So we are proud of you. We are glad that you are serving our country the way you are. Very proud of you. Uh, we come today to begin a series of meetings with government officials because of our love for this country. We find ourselves in a place where uh, we have to make our presence felt and known by government officials. Uh, we look for peace. We are fighting or working towards peace. And when we hear of any sign or, or see any signs that there may be a discord that will lead to uh, this, uh, any kind of disorder in the country, we would like to step in and give a few words of advice. And the, the, the meeting with you today is not the only meeting that we have planned. Uh, we are hoping that in the end, we'll be able to reach all government officials, especially those who are vying to, to uh, continue to lead our country, to assure them that we are here to work with them and we want things to be done in such a way that there will be no discord that would lead to uh, any destruction of property and lives. So uh, we are not signaling you out. You are not the only one 
Uh, we have heard that uh, there are those who think we are taking force with you. We are not forcing with you. We are your brothers and your sisters. And we want to work with you. Give you the advice that we have. And we hope that the rest of the nation will listen to what wisdom God has given us. Thank you for taking us in this day. God bless you richly. Amen. All right. So, let me continue. Okay. I think they're coming. Okay. Thank you, Bishop. Again, welcome to our office. I believe this discussion has to do with the statement attributed to me. Let me confirm that I made this statement, and I made this statement from a background of a combination of a lot of issues. Since we won this election, and I believe democracy is about the will of the people, and anybody who wants to win a seat in a democracy has the right to do everything within the ambit of the law, and those tenets allow in democratic practices to win these seats. Since we won this election, the executive branch of government head of <laughs> himself have spared no time and no effort at any at this seat. They have done retreat. They're doing reclaiming their seat. All of those stuff. All of those part of the politics. But when you start to go beyond credible information, public action, when the president of Liberia and his and his folks are publicly heard that they must win this seat at all costs, then it's problematic. When the Minister of State, Nathaniel McGill, goes on radio, public radio, with evidence available, that we will not sit and allow Darius Dillon to win the seat again. To win the seat is not an allowance. It is the decision of the people. When the superintendent of Maryland, where in Maryland, with evidence available, is saying that CDC is no longer just a party. They are the government, understandably. So they have control over the army, the police, and all the state security apparatuses and they will use them to their full advantage. It is easy to remember District 13, violence, election violence, and District 15, election violence, that almost got Talia Uwe killed, and score of our people injured, probably damaged, with not one person prosecuted to death. District 13 violence was led Personally, by Jefferson Koji, the city mayor, blood spilled, properties damaged. A political leader of a political party in this country, my party, Liberty Party, Nyomdi Kanga Lawrence, was physically present, was bodily taken into safety. Now, one police report as to what or who has been caught or found uncoverable to date. When the entire government missionary led by, facilitated, aided, and abetted by the president is breaking every rule and ordinance for this seat, whereby there is no more code of conduct in this country. He has all his ministers in the streets campaigning in violation of the code of conduct 
because of this seed, then it says that true is the threat that they will get this seed at all costs. And so I made a statement which I will repeat verbatim. When the people go to the election and their will is to vote Darius Dillon out of office, let the people will prevail. Because that's what democracy is about. But if the people went to the pool and voted Darius Dillon as their choice, and that to make true the threat by President We are and his people, that they must win the seat at all costs and take away the people's will as in waking the election, clearly, then President We himself will not end his time. If, so President We will end his time if they don't temper with the election. We know what tempering with election in this country has caused us. They have brought this country this far. And it's not only about election, the bad government, the frequent gross abuse of the respect for the rule of law. All of these things are things that should concern us as a country and people. There's one seat. It's not, it's the, it's not the reason this country is going downhill. Children are being raped every day in this country. It doesn't concern the president and his folks. Corruption is practically in double three piece costume, brand new, and is walking freely on Broad Street with people cheering. It doesn't concern the president and his folks. You can move freely. My people tell me how they are chased, harassed in communities by people known to be citizens. They are emboldened to do these things because they see the president lead them into these things. And I wish these things would call the attention of the religious council in this country and every one of us together. I'm a lover of democracy. I'm a respecter of the rights of people to freely associate and decide who they want to lead them as in terms of relations. While we are a respecter and an ardent, fervent respecter of and lover of democracy, we detest people encroaching on people's rights and any attempt and other acts that have the potential to derail the democracy that we want to flourish in our country. And so I sent that caveat. Since they must take this seat at all costs, probably including getting rid of me physically in my life. I re the OKFM reported that the presumptive candidate of CDC for Maserato and my colleague, Senator Poli, Sir Joseph, met with ex Kalos, not ex generals. Ex generals are enlisted men of the army, commissioned army personnel who you retire. Ex rebels and killers are not state actors. They are criminals. They are war criminals. When state actors start to hold secret meetings with them, with my name being the target and center for discussion, then it says a lot. It should come for concern. I have not seen or heard the council. This thing was all in the air. Okay, FM broke the news. Other news media uh, 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 corroborated Okay, FM story. We did not see the religious council. We did not hear the religious council. Probably they did, but we did not hear. If they did and we did not hear, we say sorry for not hearing, but we did not hear. 
25 million US dollars infused in the economy or said to have been infused in the economy for quote unquote mop up exercise. Nobody knows what happened to that money to date. Two different reports, including the presidential investigative team report, clearly said that misgivings, misuse, misapplication of interested funds, criminal acts took place. Those who presided over the infusion of that money are still walking around. The Minister of Finance has the audacity to call up to demand apology from opposition in the name of no money missing and no $25 million in question, we should apologize to them when the evidence is right in the lab. Today, yet another $25 million for quote unquote stimulus package for food distribution across the country. It's practically, practically going dead. And the country is silent. We don't hear from the religious council. But thank God that we are having this discussion so that we know that I'm a respecter of the law. I'm a peaceful citizen. I'm a lawyer body citizen. I do not believe in violence. I do not believe in lawlessness. But for God in heaven's sake, and I hope I'm not misquoting the intent of the power, even Jesus Christ got angry and put people out of the temple for doing the wrong thing. And so it was against the background that we made the statement. And that statement we made at the time we stand by it. The thing is, if if you don't want the cat to eat the fish, then the fish will not smell. Or we'll go to election, and it is the will of the people who put us here to take us out of here by their vote. We will say thank you, thank God for the time we said, and we'll turn the office over. If it is the will of the people to retain us in this office, but if, if it is the decision of the ruling government to thwart the people's desire, then the result will be why it will be. In keeping with what we said. Thank you. Thank you. If there is no comment from any of you, I will ask that we have this private uh, conversation with you. Okay. In the absence of the press. Okay. You don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. Media, the issue of any council wants to talk to me off the camera, so we submit to that, and then there will be briefing after the close to discussion. Okay. 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 Thank you.